I'm Mark Gibbons. I'm head of the department of the Department of Biodiversity and Conservation Biology here at the University of the Western Cape. The Gilchrist Award is uh, given every three years by the marine science community of South Africa to people that it thinks have made an outstanding contribution to marine science in the uh, previous five years or so. This year there were two awardees. There was myself from UWC and there was uh, Professor Colleen Maloney from UCT. So it was, it was quite a watershed year because Colleen was the first woman that was ever given the prize and I was the first member from a historically black university to ever be given the prize. Um, it's named after John Gilchrist, who was the first government appointed marine biologist and who's widely regarded as the father of marine science in South Africa. As a young boy, I was always mad about all things um, nat natural, and because I lived by the sea, I spent a lot of time on my own playing around in rock pools and turning over boulders to see what things I could find underneath. I was very fortunate in that I had parents that were very tolerant and allowed me to explore my own interests. I had an inspiring uh, biology teacher at high school and I was addicted to Jacques Cousteau documentaries with him sort of diving in exotic places all over the world. So that's how I got into it in the first place and then it was just natural for me to go on and study marine biology at university which I did at the University of Liverpool in the UK. And then from there I managed to win a scholarship to come to UCT and after that I got a postdoctoral fellowship with the Foundation for Research and Development which is the precursor or the forerunner of today's um, National Research Foundation. And after a few years with them they seconded me to the University of the Western Cape to try and build capacity here in the area of marine biology. And then I was appointed to the staff in 1995 and the rest as they say is history. It's hard. You always, you always need some sort of role models that, that are going to sort of encourage you into that area. But then you also need tolerant parents and people who are going to support you to explore your interests. If you've got parents who've got very strict ideas about where they see you going with your career and you're not able to make those choices for yourself, then it becomes very difficult. Well, one of the nice things about working at a university is that you can do pretty much what you want to do in a research area, providing you can get the funds to do it. So it's not like working in a government department or something where you have to do a research on a particular thing so that the government department can deliver on a particular mandate. So that's been great for me because I've got a very curious mind and all things natural, as I said earlier on, fascinate me. So over the years, um, I've had projects looking into the taxonomy of marine invertebrates. Taxonomy is the science of naming organisms, animals and plants, based on what they look like and um, uh, on their genetics. I've had projects uh, looking at zooplankton ecology. Uh, zooplankton are those animals that float in the water column and uh, which provide food for very many fishes. I've had projects looking at jellyfish. Um, uh, jellyfish are thought to be increasing around the world and as they increase, so they cause problems for us and our use of the marine environment. I've had projects on fishes, everything from sharks through to gobies and most recently I've got into the marine invertebrate communities, the little hohos that live in sands and mud in offshore regions around South Africa. Well, I'd like to think that the, the work that I've been doing has a greater relevance than just purely academic subjects. In the area of taxonomy, for example, the groups of organisms that we've been studying have been organisms that people haven't previously studied in any detail. So our work is adding to our understanding of biodiversity around South Africa, uh, which is useful for when they decide where to put marine protected areas and such like. Many of the organisms also have um, chemicals that could prove useful down the line for um, novel, novel drugs. And they're useful organisms because they give you an indication of the health or state of the environment. The work on um, zooplankton is important because, as I said, zooplankton are food for many fishes. So if we understand the health and the condition of the zooplankton, then we're able to understand something about the fisheries productivity of a region and how ecosystems uh, function. 
Jellyfish, as I said, also are increasing around the world, and off Namibia in particular, they cause all sorts of problems for fisheries and for our use of the marine environment. Yet we don't really understand very much about why they're so, in, uh, where, why they're so common right now and whether that system is going to persist. So trying to understand what makes these things tick has uh, importance down the line. Fish are fish, and fish will always be important uh, to study because they provide a resource for human consumption. And the work that we're doing in the area of offshore hojos is important because these are the same areas that um, are being targeted by phosphate mining companies for oil and gas exploration and for minerals. And so it's important that we understand what's there so that we are in a position to understand the likely impacts down the line of these mining activities. So yes, I believe that I've, the work that we're trying to do is important from many respects.